Hello, my name is Joe, and this is Sierra Specialty Auto. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to finish modifying my old Montgomery Ward uh, arbor, grinding arbor, uh, by in, uh, installing ball bearings in it to replace the original friction bushings. Uh, let's get right over to the milling machine. Uh, flip this angle plate over and start working on the other side. I was just about ready to break down my setup when I realized I need to bore out this uh, clearance hole. I need to be able to get to that from the other end and right now it's close to the engine 3 8 bore but it's not dead on. It's probably it's, it's probably very close at the top, but it's a couple of thousandths off at the bottom. So I'm going to back the, the uh, boring bar off and uh, bore that clearance hole on, until I get a full cut to the bottom so I can reach it with the coaxial indicator when I come through from the bottom after it's turned over, which will be down from the top. See if I can get a check with the mirror here. Yes, that's a clean cut all the way around. I had run a reamer through there and before I bored it, I could see the reamer marks. So, I can't see them now. That tells me we're good. Alright, I'm going to break this setup down and turn it over, clamp it down again. I have this clamped back down in the same sort of a three-point configuration that I had before, only reversed of course, upside down. My coaxial indicator is just barely long enough. I'm going to have to run the clamp all down into that bore at the top in order to get it to register at the tip of the probe, but it does work, uh, and I, I can uh, run this around by hand. Always want to do that uh, before you turn the mill on, and I'm within a few thousandths of an inch. So I need to start the mill on slow and uh, do the fine tune here. And I sure am glad that I remembered to. Uh, touch up this bore down here so I have a reference point. That's uh, well within a thousandth of an inch. I'm going to zero the DRO and clamp the uh, clamp the travel. I'm going to, well I have the uh, cutting tool is about the right place. I'm going to uh, touch up this relief bore at the top. Well, I'll take that same cut. That should work. cut about three-fourths of the way around so I'm going to try maybe another five I was expecting this to be off a little more that took a full cut now I can set my depth of uh, 
40, was it? Three seventy one. Let's take three more. I think that's going to be it. It's almost trying to start. That's perfect. Now let's break this set up down and see what we're going to do about locating the inner races. As I was gathering my parts on the roll around cart and cleaning up, I remembered that I wanted to put a woodruff key seat in this shaft for the pulley. I've lined up on the dimple that was in the shaft uh, from the set screw on the pulley. I've touched off on top of the shaft and come down half the shaft diameter plus half the cutter diameter or half the cutter width. Uh, so now I should be centered on the shaft. Uh, Machinery's handbook says I want a depth of 214.8 thousandths, 0.2148, uh, I'll go 0.215, and I'm all, I'm zeroed off in the Y direction, so let's start the mill and make that cut. I'll break down this setup, deburr, and we'll meet over at the roll around cart. I have decided that I do not want to put Loctite in this assembly to take up the uh, two and a half thousand clearance between the bearing and the shaft. Uh, I don't want this to be difficult to get apart. So I'm going to cut a stack of brass bushings to go between the inner races of the bearing on each side uh, to add to the pulley so that when I put the wheels on the shaft I can tighten them up against this stack up in the middle and have uh, no load on the inner races of the bearings. I want them to be uh, uh, traveling in their own uh, natural path without any uh, uh, pressure on one side or the other. In order to do that I will need to put uh, put this together in just the right order. Uh, by that time of course this bearing will be in here. Uh, I'll need to pass through the 
through this bushing and this bushing will have to have a slot for the key uh, in order for me to be able to drop the key into that slot and then keep passing it through into the pulley. If I don't do that uh, I won't be able to get the key in, uh, in, in position. So uh, the idea is that there will be a bushing and I have some marks on here to show me where I want the pulley. Uh, we need a bushing here about two and an eighth inches. That's the distance from the inside face of the pulley to the inside face of the bearing. And it will need to be reduced to under three quarters so it'll pass into this uh, uh, bore uh, where the bushing was, the, the original uh, brass bushing or bronze bushing. Uh, I've let that bore out a few thousandths over uh, three quarters of an inch. Uh, so it sh that sh uh, three quarters should uh, clear nicely. Uh, so I think uh, once I get that, uh, this first bushing made, uh, and put this, well I should be able to calculate. I've got, uh, I've already put this bearing in to get a face here to, to get a measurement from uh, the micrometer won't reach down into that bearing pocket. Uh, so from, from here to the inside of the pocket on the other side is 5.155. I have faced the pulley. I put it on a mandrel, expanding mandrel, faced the pulley on both sides to get to a machine surface that I could measure at 1.027 uh, distance from the outside of the bearing to the inside of the pocket over here is 5.155 uh, take off 340 for the bearing that leaves me 4.815 take uh, 1 and 27 thousandths 1.027 for off for the thickness of the pulley and that leaves me 3.788 inches that I need to take up with brass spacers. So I have this a couple of pieces of this uh, 5 ace ID, 7 ace OD brass tube. I'm going to turn down uh, one end uh, to, uh, to a measurement of about an inch and an eighth. Uh, turn that down to three quarter or less and then part it off to approximately two and one eighth. So let me go do that uh, and then we'll come back here and see how things are stacking up. Here's the first piece of brass tube. Fits nicely in there. The stack up will be as described pass through that now we have to put this in here first pass through that okay we have to we have to put this bushing in first also uh, so we'll be we'll be like uh, we'll be just just like like this uh, that the uh, machine sur or uh, the turn surface on this bushing is clearing here. Uh, now my question is, uh, what's uh, what's this dimension that's going to be left? We get that off of this bushing, and I think I want a micrometer measurement for that. Draw this down to in the neighborhood we were looking for approximately two and one eighth and we have two point one two three somewhere in here there's a pen uh, from three point seven eight eight I take off 
uh, two, three, and get five, five, uh, six, one point six five five. Now I see one issue as I'm going together with this. I need to have left in here one point six five five inches. Let's see if I got it one point six five five. I do. I can get a bushing of that length down in here and fed into there and then drop the pulley in. So let's go make a bushing 1.655 similar to this but shorter with a slot in it. That's about as close to 1.655 as I can get and there's enough room uh, and a nice loose fit to drop the key in there. So let's uh, let's give this a try. We'll have we'll have the bushing, one bushing going in, and I just see an issue uh, easy to solve. There is some casting flash right in here uh, that is interfering with that bushing and changing my dimension quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to go take a die grinder to that, uh, clean that up, and uh, get a, a relatively smooth surface around there. I'll be right back. There we go. Casting flash has been dressed off. Let's see if this is going to work. One bushing goes in from this side, and I uh, don't feel any uh, uh, conflict with that. And the other bushing. <laughs> we'll go ahead from this side. Should be able to get the pulley just barely down below. Well, we got plenty of room now because we have the uh, but we don't have the bearing in the other side yet. I did want to test all this out before I uh, do the final assembly. So here comes here comes the uh, opening for the key. Let's drop the key down in here. See if it'll go. doesn't really want to, does it? Are we tight on the... We're hanging up, I think, on the on the uh, keyway in the in the pulley. Okay, I may have to trim just a tiny bit off the end of the each end of the key because uh, I don't have five eighths of an inch or three fourths of an inch left in here. I've got five eighths. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. It took me about four tries of dressing that key to get it to go down in there, but I finally did. Uh, and I need to uh, get it apart one more time uh, to put the belt in. I'm going to use this link belt so that I can adjust this length a little more easily. I'm just about out of, of room on my uh, adjustment adjustment here with the uh, uh, the belt that's on there and it's pretty worn excuse me, it's pretty worn out and needs to be replaced anyway. I think that's about it. I'm going to take this to the vise uh, Probably have to get a different socket and uh, make sure that these 
two bearings are pushed in tightly against this assembly and when they when they get there I should be not be able to turn that bushing so I'm going to go try to do that and be right back that worked out as expected I have a very slight amount of drag now on this one uh, even though uh, we're not pushing against the inner races I think when, I, when we push against the inner races this will tighten up completely and it should still uh, turn freely now let's go try that out I have the <clears throat> wire brush arbor and motor all back together and it runs as good as it did before uh, unfortunately I'm discovering that the majority of the noise that I thought was coming from the friction bearings in the arbor actually is coming from the old wash machine motor if Mr. Pete ever sees this he would be horrified anyway because that's an open motor and all the grinding dust is sucking into it and no doubt that's the cause of the, the failure, the, the noise in the motor. So I'm going to have to revisit this subject. I have a three quarter horse totally enclosed fan cooled motor that came off of my 16 inch bandsaw when I converted it to metal cutting with a gearbox motor or a gear motor. Uh, I'm probably going to put that uh, on this uh, arbor. Uh, it's way overpowered but th th that won't hurt. Uh, I probably will have to redesign the base uh, in order to make that work. Uh, then it's not going to be the machine that my dad and I built uh, 45 years ago uh, but it'll <laughs> it'll have to do uh, it'll, uh, hopefully it will be quiet and uh, run like it's supposed to and that's uh, more important at this point so uh, until we do revisit this subject I hope you'll comment I hope you'll subscribe I thank you very much for watching